Hi, everybody. All right, happy Saturday. Sorry this is a day late. Yesterday was, uh, this this whole week has been a mess. And uh, I got to go flying yesterday, and then last night we tied one on real well. So, moving a little slow. All right, we're working on the finish of one of the glare shields. So you've seen me lay up these glare shields. Uh, and so now it's time to work on the finish. The normal finish, when it comes out of the mold, it's got that pebbly peel ply finish on the top. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with it. It's great. In fact, it's great if you want to use it for, like, bonding something to it, because a lot of surface area. So if you want to, like, you know, bond some nice leather to it or something like that, you could. Uh, however, I want them... I'm, I'm just experimenting with actually getting that carbon fiber finish out. So what you see me doing here is I got an orbital sander, and we're slowly making our way down to 400 grit. And uh, so each, each time I'm sanding down, I'm wiping it clean, and then I'm using the heat gun to get the rest of the moisture off. That has two purposes. One, it's helping speed up process. But two, <clears throat> as you get it sanded down from having a ton of surface area to none, the water will, as you can see there, it just comes off very fast. And I'm helping use that, use that as a guide to have I got it smooth enough yet. Uh, 400 grit's pretty good. I don't want to go any deeper than that or any finer than that because I don't want to actually start creating any shine. Right? I want this to be matte. Uh, it's a glare shield, not a glare amplifier. So once it's done, I'm going to take it and then I'm going to spray it with a couple of coats of clear matte enamel. In fact, I need to get some pictures of it for you so that you can see. It still maintains the beautiful carbon fiber finish underneath, but it's matte. So, you know, it's, a, it's not that prototypical shiny gloss stuff, which would be pointless. As if you turn towards the sun, you would be blinded. All right, so here I am uh, checking out. There's the I got the edge lock out. That's the material used to hold it in place, and then it works pretty good. Look at that. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. All right, so the rest of the video, we're actually going to be laying up another glare shield. Look, I, I'm sorry, folks, but this is all I really have to work on until the engine gets here. It's just these projects. Uh, got some Q and A here. Let's go over some Q and A. Uh, Paul, my buddy Paul asked, you know, why have you gone with a traditional wiring system of breakers versus vertical power electric circuit breakers? Uh, good question. So I like the standard stuff, right? Circuit breakers are tried and true, and I like being able to pull anything in the circuit breaker panel at any time for any reason. Whether it's testing, whether it's safety, I just like being able to have ultimate control. Okay, I'm a control freak. There, you, there. You want you want him to hear me say it? I said I'm a control freak. That's why. Uh, are there good deals in Oshkosh? Yes. Oshkosh, you get about 15% off. I got my LRU kit and my G5 there. Uh, it's fantastic. All right, real quick. So here you can see the big fancy carbon fiber. Now, I, I don't know if I've talked about this enough. While pretty, and it is strong. It is a pain in the ass to work with. It basically, it exemplifies all the good and the bad about working with carbon fiber, right? Because carbon fiber is always just trying to peel apart. It's not really held together. It's not bonded by anything. And that wide weave is really bad at it. It will just fall apart on you so fast. Uh, and you can't really sand it. So my experience so far, because you're going to see me lay up here, is when I sand that stuff trying to get that 400 grit finish, the epoxy's like, you know what? I'm not really bonded to this crap that well. I'm just going to go ahead and flank off. So you wind up with these tiny little chunks missing all over. It's like, what the hell? So I'm, I'm going to see if I can find a better way. I may have to do like two coats. Uh, I don't know. The good news is that my vacuum pump has arrived, and actually in about 10 minutes after I'm done narrating this and uploading it to YouTube, I'm going to go out to the hangar and I'm going to lay up some carbon fiber with my new vacuum system. Uh, here you can see me using a roller. Uh, so, yeah, rollers are the way to go. I mean, the chip brushes are nice, and I still got a bunch, and I use them. So are foam brushes. But when you're doing massive amounts of rolling, you need that. I mean, like a surface area, you, you need the rollers. Now, the only problem with them is that they do absorb, I'm going to say probably roughly 25 to 30 grams of resin just inside the roller brush itself. You can try to squeeze it out, but it 
it's that doesn't really work. Uh, which is fine. You just have to calculate that. So if you got 100 grams of cloth, you need 140 grams of resin. No, you need 170. So it does make you feel like you're wasting resin. Only because you're like, huh, I, I needed to use so much more. Well, that's because it's stuck in that brush. And when that thing hardens overnight, it turns into tiny little briquettes. All right, that's all laid up. Yep, and there comes the fancy stuff. It looks really good. I wish I could find a way for it to work. You know what? I will. I'm going to. So, All right, have a great weekend, everyone. Uh, once this hangover ends, I'm just going to go. I am think I'm going to go fly or something. I uh, hope you're doing the same. And talk to you soon.